Hey everyone, thank you for joining us at our master's class. Tonight we are joined by the expert author, herbalist, Brigitte Mars, and she has a PowerPoint prepared for us and we are going to be going over fertility, pregnancy, birth, healthy childcare. And for me, I think I, I just feel like so much golden nuggets in the fact that I was raised with all the basics, knowing what to do for it, whether it was, you know, acne and yeast infections or bladder infections. Like I, I actually was surprised that other kids did not know what to do. So the fact that you get this value and having the tools at home to, that actually we can use to heal ourselves is such a blessing. So thank you, Stephanie, for your coordination and helping with all the guests and RSVPs. Welcome anyone joining. And thank you, Brigitte. Mars, please take it away and enlighten us on this very important subject. I'm here with you. an honor. I happen to be Rainbow's mom, and I teach herbal medicine around the world at Naropa. And, you know, back when I used to travel all kinds of places, but here we are on Zoom once again. Um, and, you know, I, I know about the desire to want to have a child, it, and it, sometimes it takes time. And we're hearing from a lot of people that fertility is down. Um, in both men and women for several reasons. One is that, you know, many of us are waiting longer to have children. Uh, it's also possible that many of us in our time of, uh, you know, exploration that sexually transmitted diseases can impair fertility. Uh, there's many things that can decrease our, our ovulation. So I'm just gonna give you some ideas and uh, we'll also hear some about the very important essential oils that can be helpful. Um, but I really love the idea of when people decide that they want to have a child rather than it just being a mistake. Um, you know, the idea that two people decide that they want to make a baby and they are going to do everything they can to be in the best health possible before they have that child. Because if we have addictions or bad habits, the stress of pregnancy might make it a difficult time to let go of those things. So, um, you know, I, I feel what a beautiful thing when two people come together with the intention, uh, with their love to create a child. And, um, you know, sometimes we hear, why is all the interest on preventing pregnancy for women and so little on men? Well, the truth is, it's a lot easier to stop one egg than 20 million sperm. And there's a little inside joke. Why does it take 20 million sperm to fertilize one egg? Anyone know the answer? They don't stop and ask for directions. So remember that. <laughs> um, so this is a bit of a graphic picture, but a lot of women are totally unaware of their fertility cycles. And so um, there's something called natural fertility awareness, and it means checking your cervical mucus. Now that's, this is not the same thing as when you are sexually excited. This is the mucus that your body naturally produces. And so I want to illustrate, I don't know if my mouse is going to illustrate this, but on the bottom right here, you see this clear, sticky, stretchy, almost like an egg white. That is a sign that you are ovulating and that you can get pregnant five days before that and five days after. So it could just be uh, an awareness practice to test your cervical mucus and see where you are in your cycle. I love the novel, The Red Tent. If you haven't read that book, um, it's a lot about being in tune with the moon and we need to remember that the word menzies means moon. So uh, sometimes the problems with fertility can be an issue with the woman and sometimes it can be an issue with the male and sometimes it's a combination of things. But very often the foods that are good for fertility are also the same foods that are good for sexuality and libido. And so I'm gonna think of things that have life force, things that grow, and you'll see that a lot of these things are nuts and seeds. So things like sunflower seeds, pumpkin seeds, um, whole grains. I'm not a big fan of, you know, glutinous grains, but things like oats and millet and black rice. Um, pomegranates are a wonderful food for fertility because they are phytoestrogenic, meaning they contain the raw material to help your body make estrogen. And so when you're eating pomegranates, you're actually eating the seeds. 
Uh, if you do eat eggs, you want to get pasture-raised eggs. I know it's a little bit of a quagmire. You think like free-range or cage-free, um, but pasture-raised means that the chickens are actually outside. And you know, I I know that veganism is a big trend. I've been you know mostly vegan since I was 16 years old. But I just want to say this from someone who really does support veganism. Um, I was mostly vegan when I had both of my children, but I was also very, very young. And there, you know, the the idea out there in Chinese medicine is if you're having a hard time getting pregnant, um, you may want to think about adding some animal food to your diet for a period of time until you get through the pregnancy. And then you might want to go back to um, eating less of those foods. So I just want to say that, and I know that's hard for me to say, but very often a vegan diet can be very cold and cleansing. And if you're trying to make a baby, you're trying to build, you, you're you wanting to build your chi. And I have a number of acupuncture friends who, you know, actually say eating um, some animal protein a couple of times a week might just help um, in your quest for getting that baby that you want. And of course, it's not just getting pregnant. It's about the okay, idea. I, I, I'm sorry, I need to chime in. Yes. Because the, the topic of today's health is mostly about women's health. Yes. You, I, we have a discrepancy even about conscious conception. And so the this subject, I want to kind of go quicker and get to those points because we've already had this conversation. So we're, we're um, there is also a way to get pregnant also through the light of God, the way that like Mary did. And you know, that's a conversation. So even though I know you're a leader in this subject, that's the pre predominance of this class. Thank you. Okay, well, maybe you should um, no, keep going, going, but it's not about it's it's I don't want to mom. I love you. Let's just make sure that we go, we I want to get into women's health and how okay. to heal ourselves instead of a conversation about that specifically at this moment. Okay, about don't talk about food. Um, just sperm count because I'm a white tantric student. And so like, we believe that you that the way to everlasting life is for sex for sexual longevity would actually be to sublimate your sexual energy and your sperm so that you are not losing your vital forces from your kidneys. So because that's an area that we don't necessarily agree on, let's maybe not go to that specific subject when we're talking about women's health, just because okay. for me, it's literally like the fountain of youth to sublimate your sexual energy, just specifically okay. about that. You know okay. that. Well, I'll, I'll try to make this really quick and then you can uh, share what you should have figured that out before, which we did talk about that last time we did this class and we but, didn't know I'd run into this, but here we but, are. But oh we God. do know that um, electromagnetic energy, you know, sleeping with your cell phone, having your computer on your lap, um, all of those things can decrease fertility. Even yes. heated car seats can affect men adversely. Um, okay, so some of the herbs that can help fertility, ideally we wanna make our bodies more alkaline, which is easy to do by eating more fresh fruits and vegetables. And two of my favorite herbs are stinging nettle and raspberry leaf. Um, and these can be drunk um, throughout the pregnancy as well, but they also are good pre-pregnancy. Um, there's all kinds of supplements out there. Um, one that I like a lot is maca. Um, maca is a root native to Peru, and it's uh, same family as broccoli and cabbage. And it was observed by the conquistadores when they were in Peru that their animals were not procreating. And it was the natives who told them, if you bring your animals up high to a higher altitude and they graze upon the maca root, that they will get pregnant and have healthy offspring. So, um, so anyways, this is a sort of a blurry picture, but you know, the best positions for conception are um, the, the missionary style. And ideally for a woman after having intercourse to elevate her hips and stay laying down can increase the chances of conception. And of course, it's really important, you know, during uh, pregnancy to get lots of <clears throat> protein. But another thing that's really important is folic acid or folate. And that is going to be found in green leafy vegetables or, or uh, foliage. It's a good thing to remember. So um, when you're pregnant, it's I love the idea of encouraging women to sit more in a cross-legged position to give more opening to the whole pelvic region. I think 
Uh, our culture tends to sit in chairs way too much, which is very constricting and affects not only our fertility, but our elimination. Um, so this is, if you've ever taken ballet, you might remember the plie position, but it's a great way to stretch because you're going to need to stretch when it comes time to give birth. Um, here's a picture of raspberry leaf. So we talked about this being good for fertility. And uh, the, you know, if you can grow raspberries, but the leaves you would wanna harvest before the plant flowers. And raspberry leaves are high in calcium, magnesium, and iron. And they contain an alkaloid called fragorine, which helps to make um, labor easier. And it's something interesting because around the world, pregnant animals will seek out raspberry leaves. Foxes and deer and rabbits will eat the leaves. And of course, one of my favorite herbs is nettles. Uh, nettles is very alkalinizing. It's very high in iron. It's been found not only to increase fertility, but to increase milk in nursing mothers. Uh, chickens will lay more eggs. Cows will produce more milk. But nettles also contains vitamin K, so it can help prevent hemorrhaging during childbirth, which is used to be a leading cause of death. It was said that one out of every six births resulted in either the mother or the baby dying. So I you know, find that nettles is really one of, if I could to bring one herb to another planet, well, if I could bring three, nettles would be one of them. Uh, ginger is a wonderful herb for morning sickness and you don't even have to ingest ginger, even just smelling ginger. Uh, ginger essential oil can be a way of giving your brain the smell of ginger. It is anti-nausea. There was a study done at Brigham Young University that found that ginger outperformed Dramamine um, for treatment of motion sickness, but ginger is safe to use during pregnancy. And I find just like smelling it, taking deep inhalations of it would be very helpful. Um, you don't want to use uh, wild ginger, but ginger is, you know, delicious and it's safe to use. So this is definitely one of my favorite ones. Rather than thinking of morning sickness as a bad thing, it actually can be a sign that your hormonal levels are high and high enough that you're going to carry the pregnancy to full term. Um, I love coconut oil, and this is a place where you may even want to scent your coconut oil with some of your essential oils like uh, lavender or rose, but we know that women can get stretch marks and it can happen in one day. So not only oiling your belly, but your breasts, your thighs, and your hips, um, and also the perineum area. Those are all places that can get stretch marks, and if you start oiling the perineum area, the area around your um, yoni and your rectum, uh, it's gonna help your skin to stretch so you're less likely to need to have an episiotomy and be cut. Um, one herb that is very valuable to know about is black haw, and it is a uterine sedative and it can help prevent threatened miscarriage. Now I honor that miscarriage could be nature's way of saying, you know, this isn't a viable pregnancy or the couple are not ready, but it is good to know, especially if someone has a high risk of miscarriage that taking black haw or cramp bark, which is a very close relative, they're both viburnums, that it can help relax the uterus and help prevent uh, contractions that are happening too early. Uh, kegels, you know, we hear about kegels all the time. They're really important to do not only during pregnancy, but after pregnancy to help the uterus to shrink back up. And another reason why even women my age should be doing kegels is adult diapers now outsell baby diapers. And uh, that's not really funny because, you know, babies might only wear diapers for uh, a couple years, but adults might wear them for a couple decades and no one's gonna to wanna to get in your diapers, mark my word. All right, so do your kegels. And if you don't know what that means, it could also be called root lock or mula banda, where you tighten the muscles that control the flow of urine. You tighten them and relax, tighten them and relax. And uh, this is gonna help you to uh, keep your organs in place so that everything doesn't come loose and start falling out and you end up having surgery. All right, so your belly has to grow a lot and that's why we want to oil our bellies. And 
you know, I love the idea that, you know, even before you start feeling a baby move in you, that you start putting your hands on your belly and connecting with it. And the father, the siblings can start talking to the baby. The baby can hear inside. The baby's also really sensitive to the mother's emotions. Um, one other problem that pregnant moms often deal with is heartburn. And so the herb slippery elm can be ingested in capsules or a powder. It's very soothing. It's also an herb I use for babies that are not thriving, that are losing weight. Slippery elm is one of the easiest foods to digest. And you could add it to applesauce or um, you know, yogurt or something like that. You could, but you could also use it in capsules. Don't use tincture because you actually want the mucilage to soothe and ease any type of acidity and irritation. So there's a lot of herbs that should not be used during pregnancy. I don't wanna give carte blanche to use any herb. And I know there's books like what to expect when you're expecting, which knows nothing about herbs. So they just kind of say, don't use any, but there's a lot that are really good. Um, you know, getting a baby to turn if it's in the wrong position, um, I know this is not a very clean uh, slide. It's a little blurry here, but you know, one folk remedy is to do a headstand in a swimming pool and it'll help get the baby to turn in the right position. We have to remember that not everywhere in the world do people have all the high tech hospital care that we do in this country. But if you can have the baby come out in the right position, it's gonna make it a lot easier for a natural birth or even a home birth. And then sometimes labor is overdue, and this gives a lot of uh, worry to doctors and midwives. They don't want the baby to go too far past the due date. I'm not an advocate for uh, inducing labor unnecessarily, because if you have to induce labor, it tends to make it more painful, and the mother may need drugs, whereas if she could do it naturally, she might not. I think Rainbow's ready to say something, um, so just if Rainbow, did you want to say anything? No? Okay. All right. So the, you got to stretch here. A uh, rescue remedy is a great thing to have at a birth. I've given it to dads as well as moms. Um, it's a Bach flower remedy made from five different flowers. It's good for stress and anxiety. It's one of those don't leave home without it remedies. Here's a picture of an underwater birth. Um, Rainbow had an underwater birth. I've heard that when people give birth in the ocean, the dolphins even love to come and even assist in the birth by being present. Um, here's another underwater birth. Do you know that with seahorses, the males carry the babies and they're the ones who uh, give birth to all the baby seahorses. Um, so, you know, giving birth is an intense experience. We actually get a chemical download called dimethyltryptamine which is where the word trip comes from. But when we have a natural childbirth, there's this beautiful chemical that the creator gives us that allows us to surrender into the universe because being born must be as scary as dying, you know, because it's really, you don't know what lies on the other side. So, um, you know, one of the things that happens in a birth is uh, you really realize what those who've gone before us have dealt with um, it's, it's a leap of faith. One of my friends asked me recently, isn't this a bad time to have a baby? And I said, oh yeah, it's, it's definitely a bad time. She said, but hasn't it always been a bad time? And I said, yeah, yeah, there could have been Vikings coming over to the hills or slave traders or Nazis or, you know, civil war. So it is a leap of faith and we have to give thanks to all those that have gone before that have been brave enough. Um, I really admire the work of Frederick Leboyer who said, if fathers could see their children be born, there would be no more war. Um, I don't know if that's true, but I'm really glad that we live in a time where it's more acceptable for the fathers and even the siblings to witness this miracle of birth. I think it makes us take a lot more responsibility for that which we create and have the potential to create. Um, basil is an herb or um, also an essential oil that is sometimes used after birth to help expel the placenta. And let's see here, um, nursing, you know, there's, there's nothing like nursing where the baby is comforted by your heartbeat that it is so familiar with from being in the womb. 
Um, there's a beautiful you know, connection when the baby looks into your eyes and the, the breast milk is always the right temperature and it doesn't need any fancy packaging. And it's the baby's saliva that actually designates the nutritional quality of the milk. So the kind of milk that's being produced for a newborn is gonna be different than the milk produced for a two-year-old. And it's really all governed by the baby's saliva and the enzymes in their saliva. And so I'm really an advocate for not, uh, if you can avoid it, not over giving a baby a pacifier or bottle feedings, because the more the baby sucks on the mom, the more milk she's going to produce. But if it has a pacifier in its mouth all the time, that can actually decrease her milk supply. Um, so things that can increase milk, uh, green leafy vegetables, drink more water, but some of the herbs which could also be found in essential oils, uh, fennel and anise, caraway, a uh, dill. Um, these are all wonderful ones. Nut milks are great. Um, oats, nutritional yeast. But don't be so quick to think you need to lose a bunch of weight because the priority is really, you know, getting your baby on the right foot. Okay. Um, good foods. Yes, nuts. Um, uh, some women, even women who uh, are vegan may think about taking a DHA supplement, d hecooxoanaic acid, which is usually found in fish oil, but vegan moms can take an algae supplement um, of DHA, and that's going to help the baby's brain and eye development. Um, you know, this is a big topic. I'll, I'll try to uh, not put too much attention on this because I know it's a really loaded topic, but um, vaccines in this country are given very, very young and we seem to be giving more and more every year. And um, in Europe, they wait till kids are at least two years old. And a lot of the things that we're immunizing against are actually uh, normal childhood diseases that can be very cleansing for the child to get. Most children are not going to die from measles, mumps, chicken pox. Um, and you know, what's the big deal? We can't have our kids miss a few days of school because they're not going to get into Harvard or something. Um, if you do immunize your kids, think about doing it later. Think about using homeopathic thuya to help prevent harmful side effects, T-H-U-J-A, that's made from cedar leaf. And taking a vitamin C supplement a week before to a week after can also decrease the possibility of side effects. Um, this is a little bit of a traumatic picture, and I know it's a personal decision, um, but you know I, I don't want people to just go into doing circumcision just because it's what everybody did. I think it's a trauma that we inflict on our young boys, and don't we want our boy children to be more trusting? Um, and loving, and it's been found that babies who are circumcised do not look in their mother's eyes for several days after. They also sell the foreskins to make breathable bandages. So it's a billion dollar a year industry. And it is a little trauma and they do feel. So, you know, we think it's genital mutilation. I think if you wanna be circumcised, make that decision when you're 18. And I bet not too many people, guys will do it. Um, I love that we have the opportunity for, you know, diversity in family. And my friend, uh, Jeanine Parvati Baker, the late great midwife, always said, children aren't in the way, they are the way. And I really think it's important that we don't always think that we can include children in what we do and the work we do. Um, I think they should really be included and brought into every aspect of the family's life. Um, teething babies, you know, a little bit of clove oil can be diluted with olive oil and applied on the gums. Clove oil contains a component called eugenol, which is a natural anesthetic. I wouldn't use it neat or undiluted because it can be burny, but uh, try it on yourself before you put it on the baby. But um, it's a great anesthetic and doctors or dentists will often spray clove solution on your mouth before they give you a shot of Novocaine. Um, I'm willing to bow out any time now, Rainbow, so. Please don't. What's, I, how much longer is this? I love it. Okay. All right. Um, I'll, I'll keep going then. So babies first foods, uh, you know, it's been very much a tradition to give babies grains as their first food, but I like the idea of giving things that mash up very easily, things like sweet potatoes, carrots, and ideally 
we want to add one new food at a time. If you give a baby like their first food that has 10 ingredients in it and they react to it, you might not know what it is. So let's say baby's first food is mashed bananas and they do great with bananas. And then maybe the next week you add a little bit of a new food, like maybe avocado to the food that they're familiar with. So I like the idea of, you know, not overwhelming them. And most baby foods are pasteurized at a high temperature. You can get these wonderful little baby food grinders to mash food up yourself. And, uh, you know, chicken pox, it itches like crazy. You may just need to do baking soda baths. You could add uh, seven drops. Usually with kids in the bath, I, I use a little bit less numbers of essential oil, but five drops maybe of tea tree oil or lavender oil can be added to the baking soda bath. If the kids are scratching a lot and might scar themselves, you might want to put gloves or mittens on them to decrease that. And a little herbal salve where they have a bad pox on their face can help prevent making a scar more permanent. <clears throat> Measles, it's important to stay in a dark room. Again, um, tepid baths uh, and, you know, I feel that when we, if our children get sick and we give them the opportunity to be nurtured, to be fed clean, healthy food, to be, you know, read stories to and maybe spoiled a little bit more, uh, the children will remember the good care that you gave them. This idea that we can't allow them to ever miss school or take a moment to, you know, be at home is really unfortunate. Um, mumps is a glandular inflammation uh, where there's a lot of swelling. It's usually not a, a life-threatening thing, but I love mullein tea or a compress over the swollen glands. So a compress is where you take a cloth and soak it in a hot tea and then apply it over the area. And I'm thinking a uh, lemon oil might be good to add to the compress to put on there. But again, always be gentle, use less um, essential oils with children and you know and just know that kids can be curious so keep them out of reach of children one of the most common childhood reasons why they go on antibiotics is for ear infections and i find that very often uh, sensitivity to dairy or gluten might be a factor but I think we often put kids on antibiotics afraid that it's going to cause hearing loss if we don't. According to a study done in Sweden, there was no increase in hearing loss. I think that you can find at the health food store oils that are made with olive oil, garlic, and mullein flour, and you warm them by putting the bottle in a cup of hot water and then dropping a couple drops in the ear. If blood or pus are coming out of the ear, then you should get medical attention. But I think that uh, ear infections are pretty easy to treat. You might also think about doing a hot ginger compress where you soak a washcloth in hot tea, add a few drops of ginger oil and in it, and then apply it not only over the ear, but over the lymph nodes here. And for those yogis out there doing things like the lion pose, a really great, you know, to move stagnation in the area of the ears. And uh, hyperactivity, you know, common problem. And I think that it's very often food allergy related. And studies show that the kids that are more likely to be hyperactive are often the kids who've done a lot of antibiotics for other problems. So if your child is going on antibiotics over and over again, they may have a food sensitivity. A baby could even be sensitive to what the mother is eating. So if she's eating a lot of cheese or milk or something like that, uh, that would be a good thing to stop. And, you know, smelling uh, lavender would be really calming. Uh, there's you know, very often kids go on drugs like Adderall or Ritalin, which are actually speedy. So one school of thought is to give children teas that have a little bit of caffeine in them, like green tea or even yerba mate to help their focus and concentration. So again, uh, there's a, a wonderful line of products called Wish Garden Herbs that make products specifically for pregnant women and for children. 
but if you're trying to figure out how to give them your own tincture, uh, there's a couple rules of thumb. So a child who's three gonna be four, you divide by 24. So a, a three-year-old is gonna take about one sixth of the adult dose. So I wouldn't make tea weaker. I would just assume that they might only drink a few tablespoons of the tea. So some of my favorite children's herbs are peppermint uh, and it tastes good. It's great for stomach ache. And you know, one drop of peppermint oil could even be put in a little bit of water. You could even massage a little bit over the belly. If you are massaging over the belly, it's important to go in the direction of the intestines up on the right, across and down on the left. You don't want to move fecal matter back. But you know, very often if kids complain of a stomach ache, it could be what they're eating. And it could be that maybe they need to be encouraged to go sit on the toilet for a little bit. Uh, elder has gotten a lot of press recently because it is a very great antiviral. I think of elder flowers for fever and elderberry syrup is a delicious way to diminish the amount of time of sickness. There was a study done in Israel and found that cold and flu symptoms lasted two to three days instead of a week to 10 days. Uh, lemon balm or Melissa, it's expensive as an essential oil, but it is a very easy plant to grow. It's a wonderful friend for the bees. It's a delicious herb. It's good for calming anxiety, dealing with things like homesickness, but it's also very antiviral. And uh, fennel, caraway, and anise are all in the same family. They're all in the uh, spice family or the APACA family. They all increase mother's milk and they're all good digestive aids. And I know in Southern California, you have a lot of wild fennel growing by the roadside. These, so another way that we can help maybe a, a child who's colicky is to add a few drops of essential oil to their bath. So I think of fennel, anise, and caraway, even adding three or four drops to a little baby's bath, they are going to absorb the properties through their skin. Um, one trick I taught my children and I hopefully my grandchildren are carrying on, but the smell of rosemary is good for memory. So I am a big advocate of smell rosemary while you're studying for that spelling test. And then I know uh, you maybe can't bring rosemary into the classroom when you're taking a test, but you could put some in your hair, on your wrist, on your sleeve, or uh, brush your hair with some rosemary oil in your hairbrush. And I'm you know, really into anything that can make you more clear, conscious, have a stellar memory. These are some books for children. Okay, all right, there we go. That's my little spiel. And I, I, my contribution for tonight. Thank you. No, I mean, you're, it's, it's just important that we are, that we, we always focus together. We've all, these classes have been all positive and they're great. We're just all learning, you know, just how to stay synchronized and synthesized. So I don't know what, uh, actually when the products that you were talking to me about just now with the digest and digestive stuff and probably helping with mother's milk are all in digest zen um you know the peppermint caraway anise fennel so that's a great option also to rub on the belly or to rub on the feet of adults as well as children i want to ask you about some of the oils mom that we want to use with women's health because i i just was i didn't know the conversation was as much about child birth but it's awesome to learn all of that um what i want to make sure like for things like I know there's actually a question here that I want to also make sure that I get to in just a second. Where is that question? Um, but first, what do we do? Like, I feel so lucky to have grown up and known what to do for bladder infections, yeast infections, kidneys infections. And with these oils, I'm in constant capabilities of, of, of working on those. But I find that a lot of people are not. So I just want to make sure that we go through the basic recipes for handling all of those things as well as I know there was another question of postpartum and where was the, oh, this is the, the first, let me just make sure I cover this because I'm not exactly sure about the question. It is, hello, I've got questions about PCOS, how to heal it. Do you know what that is, PCOS? Uh, yeah, po polycystic ovaries. You okay. know, that's a really, that's a really big subject, but I've written a book called The Sexual Herbal and it has a whole chapter on polycystic ovaries. I also, I put my website there. I do 
consultations, but I don't want to give that a flippant answer like, oh, just take Dung Quai or something. Right. I usually work on the liver um, and, you know, compresses. Um, so I, I, I feel like I could probably do a whole class on that. But um, yes, um, there are natural things you can do for that. And here's the thing, and this is where I, I want to synthesize it down. And mom, you're so good at making sure that no company does own you that I love. But I, we're working also with doTERRA for a reason. And I want to just, I'm actually going to read the ingredients because so much of the ingredients that you just mentioned in your whole PowerPoint are actually in the lifelong vitality change my immunity. I haven't had a cold since or jet lag. I had a friend who had not had her womb. She's at or her moon. She's a yoga teacher for five years. And on month three, which they say it takes three months for all your cells to turn over. She just got her cycle again. So I want to be able to be a one-stop shop for you where you're getting some ideas, but more importantly, you're applying them to your morning, noon, and evening plan so that you're hopefully not getting sick, period. And if you do, it's really easy for you to heal yourself. And there's so many tricks of the trade that I've learned, whether I'm on the road or whatever it is that have finally changed my life. I wish that I took these supplements when I did travel all the time, but I find that so much we get weak, our vibration gets low through stress, you know, watching the news, eating, overeating, drinking, whatever it is. But here, more than ever, we have to keep our immunity high and to be able to have antiviral, antimicrobial and anti, you know, bacterial things that we're implementing into our system every day is so exciting. So actually, somebody who I just put under you, mom, who's from Boulder, she really wanted the idea of the supplement. She was sold because I love them, but I'm just gonna read the ingredients because after she read the ingredients, she was like, okay, I'm in. So it starts with, uh, and I've never done this before on a call, but I just wanna go over this. And then we can think about if you had, if somebody gave you a magic trick and there was like 30 pills you could take and we just didn't know what brand. But then I also said, we said, and I think you can agree with me and I, I'm gonna have you chime in in just a sec, but just, what are the most superior products from the seed to the cultivation, the way we grow it with the indigenous people, also without any fillers, solvents, chemicals, pesticides, you know, doTERRA means gifts of the earth. So if we had all of these things together in a supplement that actually could change your life, give us more energy, Stephanie could speak on it. I, could, I already did my testimonial, but yeah. Would you be willing to take two of each of these twice a day? So. We've got skull cap, we've got boswalla, which is frankincense, milk thistle. We have um, pomegranate, turmeric, grape seed extract, pineapple stem, sesame seed, pine bark, L-carnitine, alpha lipoic acid, coenzyme Q10, cur cucaritin, ginkgo, ginger root, peppermint, and caraway. That's basically for the things for anti-inflammatory because so many of the things that that happen, whether it's digestion or out of balance, happen when there's an inflammation. This is more of the antioxidant, that there's a vegan one and a non-vegan with fish oil. And it's got vitamin A, D, E, EPA, DHA, omega-3s with the ALA, um, basic, basically the linoleic acid. It has the GLA, the gamma linolin, pomegranate seed oil, lutein, which is high in protein, axtamaxithin, maybe you'll know what that says from green algae, zeaxithin from marigold flower, lycopene from tomato fruit, and it also has clove oil, frankincense, thyme, cumin, wild orange peel, peppermint, ginger, caraway, German chamomile flower. So all of that to be a food whole complex, you're getting 13 servings of fruits and vegetables, you're getting all the 98 minerals that you need for every phytoessential reaction or inaction in your system. And then we finally have, um, oh no, that was, that was the antioxidant, sorry. This is the last one and this is the food supplement. Vitamin A, C, D, E, K, thiamine, riboflaxin, niacin, vitamin B6, folate, vitamin B12, biotin, panathalic acid, calcium, iron, iodine, magnesium, zinc, selenium, copper, manganese, chromium. And the source of the food is coming from kale leaf powder, dandelion, parsley leaf stem, leaf powder, broccoli, aerial parts, Brussels sprouts, um, powder, cabbage leaf, spinach, 
It also has protease, lactase, lipase, amylase, diatase, and it's finally a tummy tamer. This is the end, caraway, ginger, peppermint. Do you think, even if you haven't experienced a life change like we have, all of that stuff was in here, a lot of our women's health issues could go away in one month to three months through consistency? What do you think? Yeah, I mean, that's, that's wonderful. Um, to get all of that, that's certainly impressive. Because Stephanie's had an experience. You've been taking them. Let's hear from someone. I just had to say it. My mom gets all this free stuff from all these people. And we're, you're seeing it live. We're actually having one of these calls tonight. You guys are witnesses of some of the places where we are constantly working well together. But in base of her kind of making sure that we're not exclusive to one company, which we're not. And I don't need to be, except for if I know that someone has the very best. I want their, ultimately my angle is to reach out around to wherever your heart and soul is and to have a change. And I just am so grateful that I finally started taking those supplements because they've changed my game, my life. They would normally be um, $650. There's the level of science that went in them, but they're only $79 with the money back guarantee. So we'll go into some of our other oils and stuff, but I just wanted to like, it's just so beautiful that they even exist. And if you don't have an experience, like that's also acceptable. You could get your money back, but if your a lot of your health issues could go away in three months, <clears throat> like you stopped getting colds and you stopped getting, you know, bronchial things and you started having more energy and you stopped needing less sleep and your moon cycle got more stable with less cramps. It could be amazing. And obviously rub digest sen, and I'll go into some more, but I just had to really say that because my mom hasn't really tried them the way we have. Stephanie, what's your experience with the lifelong vitality nutrients? Um, before I was taking it, I was just very lethargic. I'd get tired easily. And I used to get sick quite a bit. And ever since I started taking them, my sleeping patterns been better. I get up earlier and I just have altogether more energy and feel healthier throughout the day. And it took like three months of taking that. And I feel really good and solid. And I haven't been uh, very sick in a long time. Yeah, totally. Now we're going to get into some fun secret stuff um, that just like, I don't know about you, but who here has had a bladder infection, kidney infection, yeast infection. I have anyone here. So a, a really good thing to do is to rub the oil onto your belly, over your air, ovaries, over your womb. But that's only going to penetrate so deep. I think that on an onset of any of those, if you do an enema with about 10 drops of essential oils. Um, and you can pick your oil. Maybe it's rosemary, maybe it's cilantro. I think a lot of the ones you wanna be able to get more and more accustomed to the vibration of mother nature so you know what it is that you need. Tea tree oil is always a good one. Lavender is always a good one. But to be able to receive the frequency and the codes of that antibacterial, antiviral, you know, up your colon, because we hold on to so much in the colon. And my mom was talking about you know, the clockwise direction for peristaltic elimination. We want to, you know, re be really mindful of the gut, everything that's happening in the guts and around it. So rubbing oils, but also doing an enema. There's more information of that, like in a book, but in quickly just having an enema bag at home where you get, add really good filtered water, maybe some yerba mate if it's in the morning um, and about 10 drops of an oil. I find that if you can hit it quickly and you get out, just whatever the body's not able to process any mucus, any sort of overgrowth of yeast quick enough, then you're ch then you can really target whatever is left over, whatever bad guys are left. So that by taking the supplements, by drinking the oils and removing just the excess, if you maybe drank too much alcohol or there was too many different exposures to negative energy or negative, um, I don't know, just within or without, the way is to is to clean is to clear the way and these oils bring in this vibration of healing and light and so using them in all the orifices are really helpful um and you can and they definitely work so but when you're using oils it's so important that they're food grade and that they're truly regenerative to the system so that's why we you know we only work with doTERRA that is certified pure therapeutic grade and it's also sourced ethically from indigenous people. Um, so mom, talk to that. And then we'll, we'll finalize with our favorite women's health oils. And I know if you have any other answers about postpartum depression, that was also a question answered, asked. 
Okay. Um, so for postpartum depression, uh, I think of things like continuing to take the DHA or the dehecooxoanoic acid, which does come in a vegan form too, made from algae. Um, I also think of an herb called blessed thistle, but that might be a little hard to find. So I'm going to say milk thistle seed. And uh, in Asian medicine, depression is a, a very liver centered condition. So doing things like lemon and water and eating a lot of greens, getting outdoors in full spectrum light are certainly good things to do. Um, smelling lavender uh, or diffusing lavender, it's a great natural antidepressant. You can also uh, make tea of lavender or lemon balm. Those are great ones. But you know, it's a lot of um, expectations and then you can be sleepless and exhausted and if the birth doesn't go the way that you want. Um, so finding support with other mothers and um, I, I know these are really a difficult time. A lot of people are feeling really isolated, but those are a few places that I would start with. I love those. And our favorite baths, I think for women's health, my very favorite is probably geranium. And I wanted to mention that with the ears too, geranium and alangalam and clary sage, but geranium I discovered on chance, bless you or whatever that was. And it's a, one of the most anti, the most incredible anti-inflammatories that you could ever imagine. It's, it's very intoxicating that oil. So it's a great one to bathe in. It's great for our moods, but I, um, it also, because it's such a good anti-inflammatory, it's helped me with an ear infection multiple times, including my daughter. You're not supposed to use these oils in your ears or your eyes, but I literally, we've been saved many times because that's how sort of specific doTERRA's geranium is. So you, maybe you try it on the outside of your ears. I would put them in because it's worked, but um, only with that oil. That doesn't mean it. I don't try any other one. But so think of geranium as something to put when you're when you're inflamed because you oftentimes people get cramps when they've overeaten a lot of sugar or wheat that month. So you want to keep your colon clear, especially that time of month, maybe right before you get your womb to do an enema is really cleansing. But applying peppermint right on the ovaries or digest sen over the entire belly that also helps create peristaltic action or a lang a lang will you talk to us why a lang a lang and geranium are so good for women's health what are the components of them well ger geranium is as you said very anti-inflammatory and antimicrobial um and it's a great rejuvenative for the skin so another nice reason to bathe with it um because i you know, I don't want to encourage people to put oils in their ear. I would suggest um, putting it on a war on a warm, wet washcloth and putting it on top of the ear. That might be safe and enough will actually be absorbed into the ear. Um, and then the other one, ylang lang, uh, means flower of flowers, and mm -hmm. it's really good for anxiety. Let me see. I think I have something on ylang lang like here, but very um, sexual looking plant. Yeah. Oh, it's, I mean, they make lays out of it. Ylang Lang um, calms anger, anxiety, and fear. It's an antidepressant, anti-anxiety, and aphrodisiac. It improves self-esteem. And this is all from my book, The Sexual Herbal, which has a whole section on aromatherapy too. Um, helps to overcome um, sexual frigidity. Mm -hmm. Good for PMS, hormonal imbalance. Okay. So, I love it. So I guess, I guess, you know, just because we have so much information that there is, and then I think we're for sure in agreement that if you, the best, one of the, my mom's favorite quotes is the best thing that you could do is something that you could do right now. And so tr doing something, mother nature gives us this entire medicine cabinet of remedies to heal ourselves at home. And if we have the ingredients direct from mother nature, there are frequencies and codes there that can save us so much time and money and resources and looking how to get better because we're just healthier. I used to never like supplements and my mom knows that because when she moved the couch, there was like thousands behind the couch. So I'm really not someone who really wants anyone to buy anything, period. However, I, I what I our intention here is uplifting the, the frequency of ourselves, of our, the codes within us, like for us to awaken, more of us to awaken, we have to 
be the change. So we have to be feeling energized and good and healthy so that we can do other work. So it sort of starts with that as a base. So I really want to invite you all, if you don't have a wholesale account and you're not using these oils regularly for, to allow us to support you individually, get your kit and do that sort of morning, noon, evening, even every 20 minutes where you're taking this other code instead of like, oh, I have them, but they're not working. What is it that's in the way? What's kind of, I like to say lately, how can we get out of the way for the way? So my intention is to use these frequencies, use these codes that are so blessedly, generously given to us, but use them and to trust that if it hasn't worked yet, the dosage, we might need to just play with it and increase it so that there's less time getting sick and having to heal from it, but more time feeling energized and healthy and passionate and open so we can transform our hearts. If we can transform our hearts, we can transform our minds. If we can transform that, our families, our neighborhoods, the world. So it really does start with ourselves and the fact that we are all given these blessings to use at home. I want to cut the searching out of the way and just say, you know, get your wholesale account, get on the program so you can be your very best, you know, most healed self. And as far as all of the topics go, you know, I, I just want to add Rose because Rose is the queen. And I think this is a, pro a predominantly uh, female class and Rose a little bit goes a long way. This is the highest vibration in the world. It actually works on immunity just as good as the heaviest hitters, oregano, but through self-love, through the vibration of love, we can, you know, be in that frequency where we're able to, you know, be the rose in the garden and transmute our lives. But it does absolutely start with ourselves and to know that healing ourselves is healing the world and that we are so worthy of you know, being able to just love ourselves enough to be in that frequency, to literally be the garden. So thank you for listening and your presence and we're available for any more questions and I will stop recording. <laughs>